Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. And on today's show, we're going to shed some light on the confusing terms used in the garden and the landscape. Like, what's in a name? Why do some plants have names that are so hard to say? Next, we're going to demystify why knowing your hardiness zones is a matter of life and death. And then we're going to explain growing conditions. Like, what the heck is moist but not wet? <laughs> then we'll talk about size. We're, at, we're always asked about time. How big will this get? We'll explain why we really can't answer that. And lastly, we're going to clarify some terms that describe plants like herbaceous, annual, perennial, deciduous, and what the heck is a woody? So Quit stay snickering, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned, and we'll be back after this short break. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. Espoma Organic Potting Mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try Espoma Organic Potting Mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic Potting Mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. So, what's in a name? The same plant can have five different names, huh, Len? <laughs> it, it can. It's really confusing. It is. Um, like, we, we were talking about how... Trying to understand the botanical names for plants, right. yeah. it, it it's not necessarily important to for the for the homeowner to really know, but it's it's good to know. It is good to it's know. It's good to know. Like for instance, uh, Japanese maple. Right. Let's just talk about Japanese maple for Japanese. instance. Um, and that I go by genus, species, and then variety or cultivar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like a Japanese maple. All right, so Acer. Acer is what? Is maple. Maple, okay. Right, so, you know, it's the Latin name. Latin name. Yes. So Acer is maple. Maple, so that's right. So a sugar maple will be an Acer. All right. Okay, a red maple red will be maple. an Acer. Right. A Japanese maple will be an Acer. That's right. So all maples will have that Acer. And that's all in one big family. Family, yep. Yep, that's it. yep. Um, and then the species, which would be palmatum dissectum. Right. Okay, that kind of describes like their leaves are, are are the palmatum portion and I won't get too detailed yeah but the species is the second name so acer right. palmatum dissectum and then the variety would be crimson queen okay so that's a dwarf Japanese maple crimson queen right so it's got three different categories right right now explain what we were talking about yesterday as far as you have a Spanish heritage. Right. Right? Right. And how within some explain what we were talking about. Because right. I'm I, I, I'm I'm at a <laughs> I, I understand it, but I'm right. a little bit at a loss. Right. We have like my mother's name is Lucia and then her middle name is Rodriguez and then her last name is Zamora. So she takes her you know, her middle name right was from her um, you know back when she was uh, not married to my my dad. Okay. And that there are some like, I know that we were talking about there are some men, and I don't know if it's because of where they're from, yeah. that they did, where they'll take their their mother's maiden name within their 
name. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, my father's name was Andres Del Carmen. So that, uh, Zamora. Zamora. So Del, Del Car- Carmen. Del Carmen was you know his, his uh, mom's his name. mom's name. Yes. Okay. Now let's think about like that in plants. Right. Um, what was your mother's maiden name? Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Right. So if you were a plant, okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you would be Zamora. Right. Okay, that's your that's last name. Last so that name. you're identified with that family of Zamora. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. And then the family name would be your mother's maiden name. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Right. Okay. But the thing that makes you unique is is Julio. My name. Yeah. Is Julio. Mm-hmm. So the same thing with plants. Right. It's almost that same way that that where a plant has it's again, uh, okay. it goes down to genus, species, and variety. Right. So you have that big family name first. And right. this is botanical Z- names. These right. are botanical So my names. name would be Zamora, so that would be the genus. Right? right. And then the species would be... Your mother's maiden name. Mother's Your mother's name, name right? right? Maiden name. Maiden name. And then the variety would be my name. Well, it would be Julio. Yeah. That's a one of a kind. Yeah. Isn't that great to know that way? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and and if Easy you, to remind. You think about it that way, where... Uh-huh. Then you get the plant you're asking for. That's right. If you go in and say, I want a Japanese maple. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> Which one? It's like, well, <laughs> all right. Um, right. We have some that grow 25 feet. We have right. some that only grow about three feet three and about six foot wide. Right. Um, you got to know what you're looking for because right. unscrupulous salesmen may sell you what they have in stock, not mm-hmm. necessarily what you want. Right. Uh, never happens at Bloomers, yeah. but it would happen somewhere else. Huh? Somewhere else, yeah. and especially <laughs> when you go to a place that may not understand plant material. Mm-hmm. Right, like they'll see, oh, it says on the tag the common name is Japanese maple, so that's got to be what they want. And where you really want <laughs> a you want a cut leaf Japanese maple, that's a dwarf cut leaf, and you're not getting what you want. Right. So sometimes the the tags can be. A little bit off sometimes. Depends. 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 Yeah. I so. mean, the, most nurseries have got it together right. where they'll put the common name first. Right. And then after that, they'll put the botanical name. Oh, okay. Which it, it's, that's the way to do it. Mm-hmm. And it's important because common names are regional. Yeah. So if you're buying, you know, a plant that's been grown in, say, right. California mm-hmm. or even Connecticut or somewhere else, right. that it may not be known for that. Right. We were talking about mountain pinks. Mountain pinks, right. Now, mountain pinks are creeping flocks. Right. Okay. There's a lot of different types of phloxes. There's a garden phlox. That's an upright Upright. plant. And then, but mountain pinks in this area, everybody kind of knows what a mountain pink is. Like a ground cover. It's a ground cover. And it's creeping phlocks. So, Mm -hmm. but other parts of the country, if you ask them for a mountain pink, they may not have any clue. What what are you talking about a mountain pink? What is it? And then they'll say, oh, you mean creeping flocks. <laughs> yeah. So plants give a lot of So you of can't names. really go by that. Huh? You, you just you? have to be aware of it. You okay. just have to be aware of it and mm-hmm. know know what you're asking for and, you know, do a little bit of study on it. Right. Do a little study, a little on, study it. Then, on it. Then you'll, yeah. then you'll know that you're getting the right plant. Right. So, again, we're talking about botanical names. Mm-hmm. And this is a little bit of a dry subject. Yeah, okay. it can be a little bit. But it's important, it, though. Right? That's right. You know, you'll step up your garden knowledge when you start asking for varietal names Mm -hmm. of plants. Coreopsis. There's a million Coreopsis. Oh, my gosh. You know, (laughs) Coreopsis articulata nana. Okay, that is another word. It's, again, the family of Coreopsis. Articulata is the the, um, species. Species. But then the nana part where if you're looking for that one that has the really bright and bright flower with the airy uh, leaves right. that almost looks grass-like. Sure. That's not it. Uh, That's oh. not it. Mm-hmm. Um, it is in the same family, but it's not the right plant. Where What you're looking for is like a Coreopsis zagreb, which, zagreb. or um, or mean boom, or moonbeam. Moon yeah. What the? Dyslexic for a moment. That, uh, again, it's no, and start challenging yourself to learning some botanical names, right. mostly varietal names. Because right, yeah. if you came to Julio in the nursery and said, Julio, I, I want that moonbeam yellow plant, uh-huh. you you know. Oh, yeah. I would, I would but know. they're asking by a variety. Right. And you would also know if you didn't have it. That's right. But if you went saying, I want that Coreopsis. Oh, we got tons of them. <laughs> <It's> like, okay. <laughs> Which one do you want? <laughs> we got them. <laughs> That's right. One Good. of each. <laughs> That's right. It looks nothing like you uh, want, but we have them. That's we right. have them. <laughs> so this I- identifies it 
more specifically, right, Len? That's Is right. It, so we're really, you know, what, when you come in, like you're saying, you know what you really want. That's right. And, and again, it goes down to, like, if you think about, we were talking about Julio's name, right? Mm-hmm. So right. if you were named a plant, Julio, your name would be? Zamora. Right. Right. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Julio. Julio. And right. Julio is that varietal name varietal that name. makes it special. That's correct. Now, I don't right. want to get any calls about how that <laughs> there are exceptions, because there really are. There are, there are exceptions, oh, yeah. but not many. Mm-hmm. Not many. Right. So if you go by varietal name, That's right. that will absolutely help. And if you challenge yourself and, hey, at uh-huh. Bloomers, we don't care if you say it funny or you say it That's wrong. That's right. We even say it funny. We, there, are, there are people <laughs> within this industry that aren't sure if it's Cotoneaster or Cotton Easter. Yeah. Liriope or Lirio. Yeah, who knows, <laughs> Clamata, right? cl- Clematis or Clematis. I That's mean, right. You say tomato, I say tomato, tomato. but I, I'll give you credit <laughs> for right. just giving it a try. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and what the really neat thing is, this is international too, isn't it? It is. It's not just here, you know, in New Jersey or. That's right. It's all over. Yep. Yep. If so, if you're in Europe and you're talking about you want an Acer Palmatum Dissectum Crimson Queen, Uh they know exactly what it is. That's right. You're in. Exactly. You know exactly. (laughs) They're going to get you what you want or you're going to recognize it. And it's going to be identified to that same plant that maybe you have planted in your landscape. Right. That's that's a beauty of it, right? I think yep. that's really beautiful. Yep. Across the country, yeah, it's the same. same. So when you go by botanical name, then mm-hmm. you're kind of, you know, you have, You've got you're it. in. Yep, that's you're right. In. You got that. You're in. So now, but don't worry about saying it right. No. It's okay. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's all right. Yeah. We, we, we want to encourage people. Uh, we don't want to have people that horticulturally spar where they come That's in right. and they say, let's go, we're <laughs> going to tell, I'm going to give you the botanical <laughs> name. Come on, let's go. I dare you yeah. to try to say the name of, <laughs> anyway. So we're going to talk about in just a little bit about some other confusing things within the, the landscape, horticulture, garden world, and we'll hopefully bring you some clarity. So right. stay tuned and we'll be right back after this. Is your yard and landscape being destroyed by nuisance animal pests? If so, Bonite has a product to solve that problem. Repelzol is an all-natural repellent that works on deer, rabbits, skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, raccoons, and many other nuisance animals. It stays effective for up to two months. The all-natural ingredients in Repelzol use smell, taste, and irritation to keep animals away. Unlike other repellents, Repelzol has no unpleasant odor. Repelzol natural formula can be applied to trees, shrubs, perennials, and around edible crops. It also works to prevent animals from chewing on fences and structures. Repelzol is so effective that your satisfaction is guaranteed. Repelzol is available in a concentrate, ready to use, and ready to spray liquid formulations. And in an easy to use granule in a three pound shaker and a six pound bag for spreader applications. Bonide products are family made in America. Look for Repelzol products at these fine stores. Aiken Back Garden Center, Pottstown, PA. Westchester Agway, Westchester, PA. Pickering Valley Feed and Farm, Exton, PA. This is Julio Zamora from Bloomers in the Garden. Join us 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center for Sips and Succulents. We'll have a creative night of playing and planting while sipping your favorite beer, wine, or beverage. Sips and Succulents is a planting party. Bloomers Master of Ceremonies, Stephanie Taylor, and I will teach you how to create and care for a new succulent garden. Succulents are the perfect plants for anyone looking to take their planting and interior design to the next level. Call Bloomers to register at 856-589-0200. 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Sips and Succulents will be a fun night out for beginners and experts alike. You'll bring home a new skill, a beautiful new planter, and fun memories made with old friends and new. Registration is $45 per person and basic starter supplies are included. Call Bloomers today to reserve your space. That's 856-589-0200. Please remember this is a 21 and over event and any beer or wine is BYOB. Spots are limited so register early and bring a friend. Deadline for registration is March 1st. For more information go to bloomers.com 
or call Bloomers at 856-589-0200, and I'll see you at the party. Well, welcome back. Uh, we are talking about uh, different terminologies within the landscape and gardening that you need to know. And it, like we were talking during the break, it'll make you a better buyer when That's you right. go in to buy plant material. Uh, the next thing we're going to tackle is hardiness zone. Uh-huh. Yep, hardiness zone. The, di- the dictionary describes hardiness as the ability to endure difficult conditions. Yeah, yeah. how about that? <laughs> I tell you. <ya. laughs> hardiness zone is developed by the USDA mm-hmm. and that it is updated on a regular basis. So I think it was in 2013 where the current map was updated. Wow. Um, things were getting a little warmer. They also had some subcategories that, that? that they did. So um, we're going to be talking about the latest update. And that uh, let me give you a description of what the hardiness zone map is. It divides North America into 11 separate planting zones. Mm, wow. Each zone is 10 degrees warmer or colder Mm -hmm. in an average winter than the adjacent zone. Mm. So every time you go into a colder area, that's 10 degrees up, but the zone changes. Okay. You follow that, Julio? Yes. All right. I understand. So now what what is the use of this? The use of this is is to be able to buy plants on on every tag for especially nursery stock, but even perennials, Mm -hmm. any hardy plants. There we go. Hardiness zone. That's right. Hardiness zone, right? Every hardy plant will have that zone on that tag. Oh, okay. Now, you can always go down in a zone, but you've got to be a little careful with that, too. Oh. What I would do is make sure you're staying within your zone. So, for instance, like okay. we were talking at Philadelphia, Delaware County, mm-hmm. all of Delaware, um, you know, that that is, uh, let's see, that is a 7A, 7B. 7B. So okay. that... And that's how they call it. Like, so 7A, those are the microclimates where 7A, oh, okay. 7B. So it's, you could be in the zone seven, okay. but then there's also a little, you know, warmer or colder, depending on where you go, 7A, 7B, oh, okay. where instead of being a six, back in the big... day, it used to be just one solid number. It's like oh, we right. were zone five or we were zone six or we were zone seven. Now they have those micro A-B. pockets. Oh, okay. But and like not... Philadelphia is warmer just simply because of the buildings that are around it, where right. it sits on the water, oh, okay. a lot of that is that determined by that. But it's not a big change, the A and B part of it, as far as temperature? Fog, it's fog the degrees? difference between growing, say, crepe myrtle and not growing crepe myrtle, wow. or growing um, some of those southern plants That's that are right. traditionally thought yeah. of as southern plants. Oh, how about that? So there is, it is. A, so you got to know, and that's why they did it. Is because oh, all okay. of a sudden, pe- the people like in south in southern New Jersey, like we're right. we're right over the bridge in Gloucester County in southern New Jersey, uh-huh. right? And we are at, in seven B, seven B. Okay, right. So our seven B is actually warmer. Where Camden County, right next door, is technically a seven A. Uh. And that what that means is that in Gloucester County. Uh, we can be five to ten degrees as a low. Okay. Okay. And where Camden County is zero to five, five degrees. Now, the closer you are to Philly within Camden County, anybody listening, you're a seven B. So the closer you get to to the buildings, Philly. let's just put it that way, uh-huh. and to the pavement of Philadelphia, you're in a warmer zone. Warmer zone. Huh. Mainline. That's going to be a 7A, 6B, and, and again, there are some areas that are closer to Philly that you'd get a little bit uh, a of a warmer, a warmer warmer zone. Now, again, we don't want to blow your head apart by yeah. listening to this, but having that knowledge of, of where you are and what your zone is is important oh, yeah. because you could be buying plants. Like we were talking about um, like hibiscus, right? right? Mm-hmm. There's tropical hibiscus. The kind that have the flower, you know, a lot of people put them around their pools Mm -hmm. and that they'll flower most of the summer. They're often seen as a tropical plant in the, we sell them in the greenhouse. But when someone comes in, here we go, botanical name again, hibiscus, tropical hibiscus. Do you mean tropical hibiscus? Mm -hmm. Which is probably, you know, that's a much warmer zone. It's not hardy in this area. Or do you mean hibiscus 
Rosa Sharon, mm -hmm. which is completely different. Completely, he, the yeah. plants do not look the same. Yeah. You know, some <laughs> some characteristics. Mm -hmm. Or do you mean the hardy hibiscus perennial? That's right. They're all hibiscus, right. but they're they are distinctly different. All plus, different. they are distinctly different zones where right. they can be grown. Right. So the tropical one it would be a lower zone. As far as not higher zone. Oh, higher zone. Higher so zone. The eight. lower the number, the colder it is. Right. So zone eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Uh, then you, then yeah. Going the other way. Like, where's our map? I, you know, if you're looking down near Florida and Florida. some of the areas where. So that would be, be your tropical hibiscus. Yeah. I mean, you're anymore. looking zone nine, ten. Wow. That low. Yeah. I mean, it, it, if you're in nine, mm -hmm. you probably grow it and plant it as a landscape plant, mm -hmm. but not in this area. Yep. It's just exactly. not happening. It's just not happening. So, again, that's tropical hibiscus. Right. But then again, they're fairly inexpensive. You use them and you treat them as an annual. Right. Now, they're also on the other side of that. There are some plants that can grow. Like Fraser fir as a Christmas oh. tree has been used for years. But I can go back. I'm old enough to remember when they first came out. Wow. It used to be all balsams. But Fraser's were just a little nicer and a little fuller. Okay. So everybody wanted a Fraser fir. And that we were getting Fraser fir. Now, follow me Follow this. Go. I'll riddle, yeah. riddle me this, Batman. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. It was coming from the mountains of North Carolina. Wow. Where we were getting bald and burlapped Fraser fir into New Jersey. Okay. And that it wasn't the fact that it was the cold that killed them. It was the fact that they couldn't take the heat. Oh, how about that? So there is another map that you don't really need to know about so much. I mean, the, a reputable uh, garden center will not be right. selling these plants. Right. Um, like there are certain firs that are not that are not necessarily hardy in this this market, um, but where it's the heat that kills them. How about that? Huh. Interesting. So, so people out there, you lend take care of all that zone. Right. What, whatever we need, you need to do in our area, or we reclassify the plants where okay. we sell, um, say, a type of plant where it's hardy, okay. technically by cold, but it we sell it as an annual because we know that it won't live over the winter or it won't will live through the summer. Right. So you know, or we don't sell it at all. Right. So you're uh, protecting everybody out there. Yeah. To make sure. That Everything's going to work for them right. in their gardens. Right. Now, when you have national companies that are getting nursery stock, you know, we're not going to name names right now, uh, but, but the, you never know. They may Their plants may be slipped in where they are not. They aren't hardy right. because of the heat issue where it uh -huh. says that, you know, they're supposed to be able to tolerate cold below zero or at zero. Right. But they can't uh, okay. because of the heat. Right. How about that? Yeah, that's so, that's one thing that you know. Yeah, that's one thing, and 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 again, where Pennsylvania can get as cold, there are areas of Pennsylvania that can be as cold as minus twenty degrees. Okay, <laughs> now that is a five A wow. uh, hardiness zone. Wow. Um, most of our listening area in the colder colder suburbs, it, it's going to be like six B. Right. You know, six A. Six A. Main line, again, it's going to be that 7A, 6B, and the closer you get to Philadelphia, it's going to be that same thing. And, and I'd say the same thing for Jersey and Delaware is going to be warmer, 7A, 7B. So we're very fortunate that we can grow a wider range of plants. Right. Yeah. That's, it's so, a, that's good. Yep. Yeah. And, and it does, we do have pretty wild swings with, with temperature Jersey, and yeah. humidity and, and temperatures during the summertime. And that can affect the plants that maybe are, like you were saying, that create myrtles, right? Right. Right. So. right. so, but again, it's learn your hardiness zone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that it's the important. USDA, if you go under, like, say, Google or, or some other search and you do USDA hardiness zone, right. you can actually put in your zip code and it will pull up uh, what's your hardiness zone, where your zip code is. Right. How I suggest easy. everybody go out there and do that. How easy. Huh? That's good. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yep. For the next segment, it's coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about uh, what's moist and not what's wet? wet? I, anyway, we'll be talking about <laughs> some more confusing uh, things that are talked about in the landscape That's and right. the garden right after this. Fertilum Succulent Potting Mix with EcoPeat is the perfect ready-to-use potting mix for all your succulents. 
Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix is a blend of sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and eco-peat. Eco-peat is a natural wood fiber from peat bogs. When added to Fertilome peat moss, it produces a superior professional substrate with an exceptional ratio of air porosity and water holding capacity. Fertilome Succulent Potting Mix will ensure maximum drainage with ideal water retention. It's simply the best succulent mix on the market. Ask for Fertilome by name at your local garden center. Available at Daniel's Garden Center, Sumneytown Pike, Harleysville, Pennsylvania. Gaspers Home and Garden, 316 Tanyard Road, Richboro, PA. This is Julio Zamora from Bloomers in the Garden. Join us 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center for Sips and Succulents. We'll have a creative night of playing and planting while sipping your favorite beer, wine, or beverage. Sips and Succulents is a planting party. Bloomers Master of Ceremonies, Stephanie Taylor, and I will teach you how to create and care for a new succulent garden. Succulents are the perfect plants for anyone looking to take their planting and interior design to the next level. Call Bloomers to register at 856-589-0200. 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Sips and Succulents will be a fun night out for beginners and experts alike. You'll bring home a new skill, a beautiful new planter, and fun memories made with old friends and new. Registration is $45 per person and basic starter supplies are included. Call Bloomers today to reserve your space. That's 856-589-0200. Please remember this is a 21 and over event and any beer or wine is BYOB. Spots are limited, so register early and bring a friend. Deadline for registration is March 1st. For more information, go to bloomers.com or call Bloomers at 856-589-0200 and I'll see you at the party. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. Well, Ed, what's the difference between moist and wet? Oh my gosh! Oh, well, <laughs> all right, <laughs> moist but not wet. Um, okay, mm-hmm. so it's gonna be something where you're watering your plant and letting it drain. So you got to have well-drained soil, okay, and then keeping it so that the humidity in the soil is, a, is at a high level. But you can't keep it so that where there's standing water oh. or there's, it's just like, for instance, a clay, you know, you're not going to have moist but not wet. You're going to have just wet and sticky ick. Um, so you really got to improve. All of, all of watering starts in the soil, right. not when you put the water on it. When you always have to add and incorporate a, a soil amendment of some type mm-hmm. to go and get your, um, so that you can water correctly, right. you know, because it all depends. You can't like suck it out of the soil once that water gets in there. Yeah. You know? It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So right from the get go, the soil, how your soil is, is going to determine how wet it is or not. Right. 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 So again, sandy soil, or do you have like, you know, the, we're, we'll get into some of these terms uh, uh, in a little bit, right. but again, it, it's it all depends because you can't right. get whether it's a house plan or whether it's a, a nursery plan or, right. or a landscape plant. You know, it all depends on what you're putting that plant into. What environment is that plant getting right. into? That's important. You know, yep. you know, and again, like when you talk about plants that have wet feet, I mean, no plant really likes wet yeah. feet <laughs> unless it is actually a water type of plant. Yeah. But there are water plants that we sell as perennials, right? I mean, we sell on our uh, water gardening plant table, mm-hmm. we're selling oh, yeah. things like lobelia. Mm-hmm. And this is the perennial lobelia. Right. Um, we're selling um, a, a lot of different plants that are also, uh, what, what always surprises me is that we're selling calla lilies. 
Oh, yeah. in, you know, that are marginal plants that are meant to sit on the edge of a pond mm-hmm. in yeah. wet environments. That's right. So, yeah. again, you, you need to know what, what watering is. Mm-hmm. Most things, what they really want is they want to be watered, mm-hmm. have that water drain all the way through the soil. That's right. And then don't water again until the first inch or so of that soil dries out. Away. Then water it again. Mm-hmm. There's not many things that that want that moist, you know, not wet, but be aware of knowing what it is. That just means you're going to have to water it over again More. and stick your fingers in the soil. Yes. You have to yeah. develop a pattern of what your plants need before you can say, I need to water it every three days. Boy, yes. We, we get that all the time, right? That's right, yeah. Uh, how many? Uh, how often should I water it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not answering yeah, that. that's right. Uh, that's yeah. a trap. And, and I love that finger uh, putting down in the soil. Yep. That's the best way of really checking your, your That's right. it. That's yeah. it. What that's, a great I think that's where green thumbs come from. That's they, right. They <laughs> that's stick their right. fingers in the soil. That's right. They grow. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, th- and sprinkler systems. Let me say something oh, quick about goodness. sprinkler systems. Right. Please do not think of your sprinkling system as the be all end all right huh. you're gonna have to adjust zones sometimes you're gonna have to just you know sit there and put a pot over that one head mm. because it's over watering that area That's right. again a lot of disease problems from lawns or from sprinkler systems right. it's better to water more at one time and less often right. heavy heavy at one time right think of how it rains mm-hmm. That's right. when we get cool. a good deluge and it soaks the ground right that's the best thing because yeah. it also will pull out Fertilizers have salts in that if you're only watering a little bit, a little bit, you're only watering, you're training that root system to grow at the top. top yeah, that's, good. that's not <laughs> good because yeah. what ends up happening, then it's on the other side when it dries out, it's subject to drying out really quick. That's right. Yeah. You want to add more water so that root system develops Strong. deeper into the pot or into the ground. Right. So. Yep. Strong, strong roots, huh, Len? Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Then we also have sun. <laughs> the sun. How much sun does it need? Yeah, how much? What's, what's all right. that all about? All right, let's yeah. break it down. Full There's full sun. sun. Right. Everybody knows what that is. Right. Okay. There's part sun. Part sun. Yeah, it's, you can understand that. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. Then there's partial, partial shade, shade. Right. Which means there's a little bit of sun. Yeah. You know, filtered sun. That's right. Then there's, <laughs> right, that, then after that, there, there's shade. Shade. Now, to me, shade is when it's underneath a canopy of true. trees. That yeah. is true shade. Right. The majority of the plants that you're buying were never shaded. They were grown in full sun. How about that? So yeah. the one thing is that they were never watered in the high sun of the day because their leaves will get burned Burned because those little droplets that end up on that leaf makes like a little magnifying glass and burns holes in them for those sensitive plants. Wow. Um, so many plants now, we, we talked a little bit about how coleus now, they can take full sun. Where a few years back, they couldn't, there were no varieties that could. Mm-hmm. But again, you want to improve your soil. You want to water so that you're watering enough so that it pulls all of that, um, those salts that are around that plant down through the drainage holes or through underneath the ground. Right. You don't want to just put a little bit a lot. You want to do more water at one, one time, time and less often. That's right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. All right. Our next segment. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> How big is this going to get? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gosh. We'll be right back after this. Is your yard and landscape being destroyed by nuisance animal pests? If so, Bonite has a product to solve that problem. Repelzol is an all-natural repellent that works on deer, rabbits, skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, raccoons, and many other nuisance animals. It stays effective for up to two months. The all-natural ingredients in Repelzol use smell, taste, and irritation to keep animals away. Unlike other repellents, Repelzol has no unpleasant odor. Repelzol natural formula can be applied to trees, shrubs, perennials, and around edible crops. It also works to prevent animals from chewing on fences and structures. Repelzol is so effective that your satisfaction is guaranteed. Repelzol is available in a concentrate, ready to use, and ready to spray liquid formulations. And in an easy to use granule, in a three pound shaker, and a six pound bag for spreader applications. Bonide products are family made in America. 
Look for Repels All products at these fine stores. Animals and Gardens Unlimited, New Egypt, New Jersey. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Sewell, Washington Township, New Jersey. Butterhoff's Farm and Home Supply, Egg Harbor City, New Jersey. This is Julio Zamora from Bloomer's in the Garden. Join us 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center for Sips and Succulents. We'll have a creative night of playing and planting while sipping your favorite beer, wine, or beverage. Sips and Succulents is a planting party. Bloomer's Master of Ceremonies, Stephanie Taylor, and I will teach you how to create and care for a new succulent garden. Succulents are the perfect plants for anyone looking to take their planting and interior design to the next level. Call Bloomers to register at 856-589-0200. 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center, Sips and Succulents will be a fun night out for beginners and experts alike. You'll bring home a new skill, a beautiful new planter, and fun memories made with old friends and new. Registration is $45 per person and basic starter supplies are included. Call Bloomers today to reserve your space. That's 856-589-0200. Please remember this is a 21 and over event and any beer or wine is BYOB. Spots are limited, so register early and bring a friend. Deadline for registration is March 1st. For more information, go to bloomers.com or call Bloomers at 856-589-0200 and I'll see you at the party. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. 1880 and we'll see you in the garden. One of, one of the questions I hate more than anything <laughs> yeah. is how big is this going to grow? Oh my goodness. You know, and it's a really hard question to answer because there's so many factors. There's so many factors. Right. And and that my favorite one is is right. well, whose lifetime? I tell you. Are you gonna? Are you talking about how big will it grow in your lifetime, and uh-huh. like say my lifetime? Right. So like I've only got you know say twenty years left or so, and yeah. in that yeah. so in twenty years, <laughs> we'll, 20 years we'll then it's it. somebody else's problem. That's right. But then <laughs> are you talking about the tree's lifetime, where yeah. you know that could live, you know, some of the trees of hundred years. Hundred years, yeah. But big again, it it goes Depends. to really a factor of say ten years down the road. Are you going to shear it? That'll slow things down. Right. Um, and that can happen, right, Len? Yeah, that's right. And, and like, to slow things down, mm-hmm. you shear them. That's right. And you basically could halt most mm-hmm. of their growth. Right. It all depends what kind of plant it is. Like, a tree is going to be different than a shrub would be. Right. But, again, it, it depends on the variety. We're right. certain, sure. you know, we <laughs> often, we talk about so many different varieties yeah. of plants, right? Tons. And that some of the unique characteristics right. within that variety are the fact that it's a dwarf variety right. versus the native variety that would grow, right? 30. Poinsettias. We were talking about poinsettias. poinsettias. Poinsettias were originally, what, 12 or, foot tall? Yeah, 12 foot. <laughs> That's right. Can <laughs> but, you imagine? You know, and varieties of plants that, mm. that you look for. But the bottom mm. line is this. Right. You put the right plant, in the right spot that's right yeah at its full grown height so how it's big how big will it ultimately get right. and that's where how you figure it out right. so if it's going to be like a say a, a, a japanese blood good maple that's a right. japanese maple that's an upright that's going to get to be about 15 to 20 feet tall and it's probably going to have about 15 foot maybe a little bit more in width right um so that's that, the size area you plan for. That's right, 15 foot, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, and you've got to plan on the full size of that plant. And that's when you're talking about landscape. Right. You know, there are so many dwarf, like dwarf conifers. Oh, yeah. What a collection that we have of dwarf conifers. Oh, beautiful. And the fact that they are going to stay small, mm-hmm. like dwarf Hinoki cypress. Right. And here we go back to names again. Oh, yeah. There's a semi-dwarf Hinoki cypress, then there's a true dwarf Hinoki cypress, 
you know, it, it's just crazy with how you know it's Camiciferus obtusa nana gracilis. Right. Oh yeah. That's the name of the dwarf. How about that? The the true dwarf. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then there's you know Camiciferus obtusa nana. Mm-hmm. Which is the semi dwarf where it still gets to be six feet tall. And I'm sorry, everybody's head's probably ready to explode. That's right. But the <laughs> issue is within that botanical name is the code of how big those plants get. Right. right. And that by asking for the right plant, mm-hmm. then you'll you'll know how big it's gonna get. Right. Now, Len, when when uh, customers come in sometimes, oh that's a dwarf, they think it might be a foot or, or you know, or, or True. Less. Yeah, we we say to them, oh no, that's not a dwarf. <laughs> you know, well, like I'd say the mugo pine, right? Dwarf mugo pines. They can get that's to be true. three or four foot. That's no right. No problem. It's dwarf, it, considering what the regular mugo will get to. We'll get to you know, right. six to eight. You know, right. so again, it, it's that's why it's so hard to say <laughs> how hard. big will this get. That's right. You know, it, it also has to be where you can can keep keep it under control if yeah. you. Go and prune it. Yeah, if you're going to shear it, prune it, do mm-hmm. what it takes. Like a, a pine, for instance, you have to tr- take the candles, candles off, off right. in order to keep it that size. That's right. Um, rhododendrons, they, you don't go with a head shear to shear rhododendrons. <laughs> you, right. you, it's best if you take the new growth off or if you, after the flower has already, there's that leaves that spidery thing. If you pull that off, right. that, that deadhead that, then you'll have a more compact plant. Yeah. And that's what we all want. We really want a nice, compact plant right. that will fit in the area. Right. Um, just understand that, that it's not somebody being evasive when they're not directly oh, saying, yeah. it's six feet tall. Right. Because it might be different. There are other things to it that, mm-hmm. that other factors that will control the size of that plant. That's right. But never force a plant into the wrong spot. Yeah. That's, we, and that's that happens it. a lot. Oh. oh my goodness! How many times? <laughs> Every weekend. I know. Every weekend. It does, yeah. Oh, Every I gotta weekend. get that big tree out of my house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know, and also, don't worry about having a little bit too much space between plants. It's mm-hmm. not that big a deal. Yeah. You know, it. Again, it's better to understand the plant that you're getting, mm-hmm. and to understand the height it'll be. You know, we like to answer questions like, "How big can it get? How uh, big?" You know, can you keep it controlled by shearing or or, or pruning? Yeah, yeah. Those are the kind of questions you need to ask. Not yeah. necessarily overall, how big is it going to get? You know, sure. it, it all depends if you're going to be dedicated to shearing it or not. That's right. If you shear it, you can keep it to four foot. Right. If you don't shear it, it may go to six feet. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's, and that's what we're there for, Len. We're there to show people, right. you know, how to, you know, how it's going to grow, how big, you know, that's what right. we can do with it. You know, we do it at Bloomers, yes. but, you know, independent garden centers, that's what they're there that's for. They're, yeah. You're not going to get that anywhere else. You know, and yeah. we we say favor yeah. your independent garden center just simply because that they have the knowledge right. to make you successful. That's correct. If you're just buying it because it's a widget, you know, it happens <laughs> to be, you know, it's like, oh, it's a plant, let's get it. That's right. You know, then buy it anywhere you want. But the garden centers are going to give you the information you right. need right. to be successful. That's right. We're going to give you a nice plant and we're going to have the scale set for you and it's going to look great. Yeah. 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 But again, <laughs> I mean, how big does a forsythia get? Oh, my goodness. Well, I mean, it's like, well, um, <laughs> They're six foot now, now, but they may not get to be, you know, any taller than six feet because what will happen is that they'll flop over and they're going to be about 12 feet wide Wide, and about six to eight feet tall. There you go. It really doesn't grow much taller. (laughs) And that's the other question. It really doesn't grow much taller, does it? It's like, well, it it, it looks different. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Kind of spreads. (laughs) That's right. You know, a lot of plants, remember, especially in the nursery, you're buying seedlings. You know, some of them may have been grown for 15 years, but they're still not at their full glory. Um, So, again, perennials, too. I mean, perennials. perennials, Same thing. Perennials are a long commitment where it's going to be growing over several years to become that true adult plant. So, again, Try to be easy on those guys in yeah. the nursery asking how big is it going to get. Just know that it's going to require a yeah. different Thank you, lot of, of – <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it's going to require a lot of different factors. Yeah. And, and again, on your part, a little bit of care, 
That's right. And pruning is not like every week, by the oh, way. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people think it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I got to be out there all the time. Yeah. If, if you cut a third off, maybe that's. Yeah, yeah. but. But that that's on a perennial, yeah, right? Yeah, or little, you just deadhead at the, the right time. Yeah. That's all. That's all. That's all. Not a whole lot. Hey, we're yeah. there to, to get it straight and try to make some of these these uh, terms that, I mean, this show is kind of dry, but it's got information that uh, you'll be armed with when right. you go out. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's coming. That's right. It's coming. Next week is our last show in, in February. February. Wow. How about Spring that? is here. Ooh, there we go. You know, <laughs> I mean, love it's it. pretty incredible. Anyway, yeah. but for our next segment coming up, uh-huh. this is uh, this is one where it often confuses oh, a lot of people. Like <laughs> every year, every yeah. year we have the same thing. Uh-huh. You know, gardeners that have been around for a while, they want to know, like, what's an annual? What's a perennial Perennial's, again? Yeah. They kind of get them mixed up. Get. We're going to shed some do. light onto yeah. these categories in just a moment. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is dedicated to the care and feeding of wild birds. We carry a flock of feeders like the Brome Squirrel Proof Feeder, which has a lifetime guarantee. Brome makes fantastic feeders for frustrating squirrels and feeding songbirds. Bloomer's Bird Sanctuary has a vast selection of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. We carry Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and our own line called Bloomer's Blend. Bloomer's Blend Songbird Magnet contains premium black oil sunflower, peanut splits, millet, safflower, and tree nuts. It's sure to attract the most colorful songbirds to your yard. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County, New Jersey. Visit us online at www.bloomers.com. When you come in, ask for Shirley Spurbeck, Bloomer's Wild Bird Specialist. Mention you heard it on Bloomers in the Garden Radio, and we'll give you $10 off a 20-pound bag of Bloomers Blend Songbird Magnet Mix. This is Julio Zamora from Bloomers in the Garden. Join us 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomers Home and Garden Center for Sips and Succulents. We'll have a creative night of playing and planting while sipping your favorite beer, wine, or beverage. Sips and Succulents is a planting party. Bloomer's Master of Ceremonies, Stephanie Taylor, and I will teach you how to create and care for a new succulent garden. Succulents are the perfect plants for anyone looking to take their planting and interior design to the next level. Call Bloomer's to register at 856-589-0200. 7 p.m. March 9th at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, Sips and Succulents will be a fun night out for beginners and experts alike. You'll bring home a new skill, a beautiful new planter, and fun memories made with old friends and new. Registration is $45 per person, and basic starter supplies are included. Call Bloomers today to reserve your space. That's 856-589-0200. Please remember this is a 21 and over event, and any beer or wine is BYOB. Spots are limited, so register early and bring a friend. Deadline for registration is March 1st. For more information, go to bloomers.com or call bloomers at 856-589-0200, and I'll see you at the party. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. And if we use your question on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Well, and plants are classified in many categories, aren't they? Sure are. Yeah, like what's a uh, woody, what's a bird, what's a woodpecker. <laughs> well, woody, car. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the woody from the 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 song from uh, who was it? The Beach Boys, right? Beach Boys, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and then all right, a, a woody, <laughs> okay, is a tree or shrub that has the wood material left over in it after okay. this the winter happens or or during the winter. Right. Okay, that is a woody. Like so, okay. a tree and a shrub, a, a rose. Right. Um, same category. Yep, same category. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, an herbaceous plant 
is something that dies back down to the ground. Oh, okay. Now it could be it could be as an annual where it dies back down to the ground because it's dead, mm. but it also was herbaceous. Okay. Or it could be a perennial, like a hosta, for instance, that dies back down to the okay. ground. That's an herbaceous plant. So what you're saying is it could be an annual or a perennial. That's right. Okay. That's right. Now, so again, when we're talking about woody plants, mm -hmm. um, mostly nursery plants, right. landscape type plants, um, not, uh, not perennials. Not perennials. Yeah. You know, there's some that are close. Like, I mean, that's why it's funny because in the beginning when perennials were first becoming really hot, it was people weren't sure how they were supposed to classify oh. um, like Budlea, butterfly bush. It right. used to be sold as a perennial. Oh, yeah. But it's technically not a perennial. It's a, it's oh. a woody plant. It's a shrub. Yeah. Now, but, is this going back how long? Oh, I don't know. Way back. Uh, way back. Oh, boy. You know, and, and again, there, there are also plants like, okay, so if you take a hardy hibiscus, okay. which is traditionally – thought of as a perennial, right. but you don't cut it back, is it an herbaceous plant? <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> yeah, all right, right, so everybody, we're, you're getting confused. Yeah, Let's, yeah. We're going to get off the subject. Okay, first of all, mm -hmm. perennial. Perennial, right. A perennial is a herbaceous type plant, right? okay, That's usually right. without a woody stem mm -hmm. that comes back every year either from the root or from any stems that may be left. Now, oh, okay. again, it dies back, though. Mm -hmm. It dies back. So you, you may get some growth that's still on it. Like, for instance, a, let's say, a lavender. Okay. Right? Okay. A lavender will still push out. A clematis, clematis right. will still push out. But that, all of that uh, growth is, is pliable. It's not woody it's not so it's hard kind of, and it's kind thick. of it's fleshy not a hard kind of a fleshy kind of thing it's, mm, i don't want to use that term yeah. it's just not let's put it this way it 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 isn't necessarily like a stick so, so, like a, so it's bendable <laughs> it's not woody no it's that's not it woody. <laughs> that's right. probably the easiest way <laughs> that's right um annuals Annual, are right. plants that um are used and they only are for one season okay. but they can reseed themselves okay. and come back as new plants. Okay. But it's not a perennial. No. So technically, like I have gotten huh. uh, impatience to come back year after year because the flowers drop their seed and they re-sprout, oh. oh, but okay. it's not coming from a, the original plant. Oh, okay. Where a perennial is coming from, from the original, original plant, plant. Oh. you know, or the root system or, or thereabouts. Gotcha. Now there are also tropicals. Mm -hmm that are used as annuals and we touched on that a little bit with right. uh with different so, types of 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 tropical plants tropical that are plants. used as annuals. Right. Um also more and more there are traditional perennials that are not hardy. Like we we often talk about uh coneflower. Mm -hmm. There's some varieties of coneflower out there that are not hardy mm -hmm. and that you have to check the zone, but they're being used as an annual. They're so pretty, they're worthwhile, oh, everything yes. But again, they're they're just not hardy, so they're technically an annual. Right, and we we know that because you bring it in and you yeah, we and let it's, them know. and most mm -hmm. of the time it's labeled that way. Yeah, it's labeled. You know, right. a tender perennial uh -huh. is just that something that may or may not come back. Right, it's like semi evergreen. Semi, yeah. You know, it's right. it's an evergreen when the weather's nice. Yeah. You know, when the weather gets cold, it's going to drop its foliage. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's <laughs> right. a lot of different things that wow. that are that are confusing in this. It, is. it can be. And I think we, we sometimes do it ourselves. Yeah. But again, try to just think of it this way. An annual is a plant where you want it to, to be there for one season and you're happy with that. That's right. It doesn't matter yeah. if it's a tomato plant or if it's a, 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 Rica, fir, a, a Rica palm or yeah, a banana right. tree or yeah, something else me, that's not hardy. Yeah, that again. Perennials are those yeah. things that are coming back, and you want year. it to come back year after year. Uh, shrubs and woody plants are going to be like trees and shrubs that have a thick stem, that that stem growth. Mm -hmm. We talk about cambium, where you're getting rings of new growth right, each the, year yeah, from that plant. Like, right. that's a woody plant. That's a woody plant. That's a woody plant. So, but, hey. And, as, and of course, it goes back. 
where we talk about annuals, it goes right back to hardiness zone. That's right. <laughs> so, That's right. But we went over that in our first segment, yeah. so we you can watch it on, on YouTube or see right. or go ahead and follow our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. We're going to have a wrap-up right after this. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, schoolyard, we were there today. Oh, this, is, how you, this is the academics uh, show right. for sure. And necessary, huh, Landon? It is. Think? Listen, you if you have questions about today's show, right. if you have questions about your garden, if you have questions about your landscape, if you have questions about your plants, right. any type, right. call the hotline, okay? Right. That, that number is 609-685-1880. We'll clarify it. Um, right. Again, you know, you do get a T-shirt if, if we use you on the air. That's right. But we want you to understand these things. And, and this show was particularly hard to understand because there are so many different terms. And if there's anything that confuses you, please call us right. so that we can clarify it for you. Right. We want you to understand it so that you're armed with what you need mm -hmm. to make smart gardening and landscaping decisions that's right and it makes us in the garden center you know it's easier for us to kind of guide you to that plant that you really want right? that's like, right and then you, like you said you get what you want then that's right yeah you know this is our last show in oh, february my. that's it you know <laughs> it's finally time Can't to start yeah. talking about things we can do in yes. the garden Isn't right that great then? right <laughs> so next week we're going to be talking about what We'll discuss uh, vegetables. You can start indoors like right. lettuce, kale, and other right. cool crops. All right. It's, yeah. That's, that's right. We're also Exciting. Gonna, yeah. yeah. And plants that are blooming right now, like witch hazel, Ooh, look for that yeah. yellow flower. Oh, start, things are starting to bloom. That's right. You don't want to miss this. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> right. Brett, thank you. Yes, thank you, thank our you. producer, Brett. And we'll see you next time in the garden. Bloomers in the Garden is an hour-long gardening radio program that airs to over 6 million residents throughout the Delaware Valley. From Allentown to Wilmington, from the Main Line to the Jersey Shore, Bloomers in the Garden can be heard twice each Saturday morning, first at 8 a.m. on 860 WWDB, and again at 9 on 610 a.m. ESPN Radio. Each episode of Bloomers in the Garden will be broadcast on Bloomers' Facebook page and available as a podcast on bloomersinthegarden.com. Bloomers in the Garden is adding sponsors. Share your message to our large, diverse group of listeners. Commercials and segment sponsorships are available at incredibly affordable prices. Let Bloomers in the Garden get your message out to one of the largest and most diverse populations in the country. If you're interested in joining us in the garden, please visit bloomersinthegarden.com or email len at bloomers.com.